today's the big day. And our camera has been giving us issues all morning, so let's hope that that stops. <laughs> Always on the big days. Mm -hmm. So we got Tim's, just to make sure that it's gonna be a good day. We've gotta run all the way into Winnipeg now. I've got my appointment at 9.30. I thought it was at nine o'clock. Apparently it's at 9.30. She's got hers at 11.30. This is for IUI. It's only our second time. It's been over a year since we went for our last one. Mm -hmm. COVID kind of put a bit of a damper in our plans. Yeah, it set us back by a year, but uh, this is the IUI. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it, or uh, you know, it's, it's where they drop the guys off at the end of the race so that they don't have to run the whole race. We made it. That's the building. Excited? No, this this part's your. This mm -hmm. this is your time. Yes. You my, gotta go up there. My awkward visit. Have fun. Think of me. Oh wait. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna think of you. <laughs> Thank you. What else am I gonna think of? <laughs> Make good <So>. choices. <laughs> Make good choices. It's always the awkward part is leaving, but. Whatever, it's all medical stuff. It's all professional. They're all professional up Every there. Every so, other guy uh, in there is there to do the same thing. Yeah, that makes it even weirder. Does it? Yeah. Oh. I just thought all being in the same boat, okay, well, it is what it is. No, nah, we won't talk. We won't even look at each other. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'm going to go up and do my thing, and then uh, I'm going to come back down here. We can only go in one at a time because of the sickness. The big C. Yeah, because of the big C. So we only let one person in at a time. So I go up now, then I come back down. We go and hang around for about two hours, and then she goes up, does her thing while I wait down here. And then we go home and cross our fingers and hope. Hope and pray. And my part is nowhere, nowhere near as glamorous as his. Yeah, hers is, she's gotta go through a lot more than I do. Hey, could be worse. All right, here we go. I'm gonna leave you down here with her. So my part is done. I think it went well. I assume it went well. Britt just went in for her part now, so it's about, uh, oh, it's 11.20 right now. So 10 minutes to her appointment. And uh, after this, we wait. So the clinic we go to is in Winnipeg here. It's right by Polo Park. Uh, I'm here for work all the time in the area, buzzing around. And uh, it's kind of difficult to get into this building parking lot here but I'm not too sure if any of you have also gone through this fertility clinic. It's called Heartland Fertility. It's the only fertility clinic in Manitoba. There's no others. So there's not even any place we can go to if we're not happy with this place, except unless if we want to go to the next province over in Regina. I think they have one there, but that's a seven hour drive, or we can go a nine hour drive up to Saskatoon. So that's, that's our option. So we're gonna give a, a if it doesn't take the first month, uh, that's okay. They say that on average it takes uh, less than six months or six tries of this. I really kind of wish I could be up there with her right now. But alas, this world has changed. This virus has changed everything. I'm, I'm just thankful that they're even allowing us to come back. But like I said before, it's been a year since we've even been able to do this. So they say, it usually takes less than six months uh, on average. So we're gonna try this a few months and if it doesn't take, our next step would be IVF. Now like I said, this is 625 bucks a pop. IVF is, I don't know the exact numbers, but it probably comes out to about between 10 and $15,000 each time. And that's a lot more in depth that I'm not gonna go to on this channel right now, but I'm sure you guys can Google it if you wanna know more about IVF. It's called in vitro, in, in vitro? Fertilization in vitro. Is that what it's called? I, I don't even know what IUI stands for. You guys can Google it if you want, whatever. So, a lot of people don't talk about fertility issues. I don't have any problems talking about it. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with her. The doctors have looked at us both closely and there's just, there's no connection being made yet. So, I'm, like I said, I'm very thankful for the modern medicine that we have and the medical advancements and technologies we have to sort of 
help arrange a meeting or maybe speed up the process or arrange a date for the two, you know, <laughs> however you want to say it. Uh, there's a lot of people our age going through the same thing. It's almost, I would say it's almost at an epidemic level where people our age are just having trouble conceiving and having a child. The generation before us, I think mean, my, my mom's parents had six kids, no problems. My dad's parents, as most of you know, had 17 children. They just had to look at each other and boom, there comes another baby. No problems with fertility whatsoever. And back in those days, yeah, they were they may have been very poor, but they, they ate all natural food. There was no growth hormones in any of the food. Uh, everything that they ate pretty much was grown straight out of their farm lands. And uh, nowadays, there's a lot of things that we add into our foods. There's herbicides and pesticides that we spray all our foods with. There's uh, growth hormones in all of the meat we eat pretty much, or a lot of them, GMOs and stuff. Uh, some of them don't have that, but even if they don't have that, they have other chemicals that are used in there. There's preservatives in there to make it last longer on the shelf. Like, have you ever noticed a pack of bread will last on the shelf for weeks? How? <laughs> But that's what I mean, the preservatives and everything. And I really think that that's sort of poisoning us a little bit. Maybe not poisoning us, killing us, but really lowering our fertility levels. That's just my own opinion. I mean, I'm not I'm not a, a scientist or anything, but I really feel like I've, I've read a lot. I've done my research and it really seems like that could be a problem uh, because it's our generation. Like uh, the millennials we were born in, 80, in the 80s and early 90s who are all trying to start families now, who are all having a, a pretty hard time with it. Almost all of my friends, except for a few who haven't had any problems, but a lot of people that I know have had to try for five or even up to 10 years just to have one kid. Up to 10 years just for one kid. And there's a lot of people we know who also had the same story. Lots of people. So I talk about it because I know there's a lot of people our age going through the same thing right now. And like I said, it's almost like a little epidemic that, that people can't get pregnant anymore because it used to be so easy. My dad's parents, my Oma and my Opa, they just had to look across the room at each other. And that's all it took for the most part. There's a little bit more involved, I'm sure, but it's, uh, it's strange to say the least. And this place is full, they're busy here. So the reason I talk about it is I want this to be a part of my story. I want this story on my channel. It's a part of my life and it's a, it's, it's a huge part of our story. And once we do finally have our children, it will be a huge part of the story of how we got to where we are. And I'd love to be able to show them one day. Maybe we'll be watching this video right now and you can see what your mom and dad went through and how much we wanted you and how much we loved you before you were even conceived. Before you were even a twinkle in my eye, as they say. Well, I think there's a little twinkle there right now. That's, that's, that was probably you. Probably you. So, uh, it'll be, int it'll be neat to be able to share this experience with them. And, uh, you know, who knows how long these videos will be on the internet. Maybe, maybe they'll be on the internet for centuries. Who knows how long YouTube will last or how long the internet will last. Or maybe someone will find my, my hard drive because I save all these videos, right? Maybe you're watching this in the distant future of how life was in 2021 and you're living in like the year 2500 or something. And yeah, in the year 2021, there is a huge problem with people my age uh, and couples our age in the 30s, in their 30s, having children for some reason. And like I think it may be in the food. I don't know. By the time you watch this way in the future, maybe they will have figured it out. Maybe they will have kept it a secret. I don't know. But uh, I'm not uncomfortable talking about it with you guys at all. I want you to be a part of this journey as you're following our life. Because I said, this is a big part, big part of uh, what's going on in our lives. This is today, like this is the big reason why I switched. Well, I didn't switch careers, but I switched into a different position so that I could be home every night, so I could be home every weekend. And you know, once the baby is born, I'll be there every day. I want to be at every hockey game or whatever they want to do. If they want to do gymnastics or taekwondo or jujitsu or whatever they do in their free time, they want to play soccer or baseball. I want to be there. I want to be a part of it. You know, I want to, I want to be there. So, uh, like I said, when I got into this new position, we turned the page into a new chapter of my life. 
and we're gonna keep doing these videos. We're just in the next chapter now. It's exciting. I really hope it works this month. I'm excited. I hope she's doing all right in there. She's been in there now. She should be in with the doctor. Yeah, she should be in the doctor, with the doctor right now. It's 11.34 now. Her appointment was at 11.30, so. But because of the virus going around now in 2021, I have to uh, wait out here. Good thing I have all of you to talk to. I'd be all by myself. I don't know if you guys can see it, but way over there on the other side of the road, is one of the famous Winnipeg snow sculptures. It's February in Winnipeg, Festival de Voyageur sculptures. It's an owl. It's beautiful. So how did it go in there? It went. My nurse was very friendly. The experience since we've been back, since the start of this whole C-19 thing, has been a lot more pleasant. They've treated me a lot, a lot more respectfully. <laughs> They've been a lot more attentive to their patients in my experience. So. They've upped their bedside manner? They've upped their bedside manner. My nurse was phenomenal. It was a lot less painful than the last time. A lot smoother, a lot quicker. Uh, she had a great sense of humor. I loved her. Um, and she has a record for uh, inseminating ladies with twins. So, twins would be phenomenal. Twins, here we come. That would be awesome. But, beggars can't be choosers, so I'll just take one if that's all we can get. <laughs> as long as it's healthy, I do not care. Boy, girl, whatever. I'm glad they've gotten better then, because I was just telling them before, this is the only fertility clinic in Manitoba. The nearest one is like at least seven hours away in yeah. the next province. Yeah, Ontario and Saskatchewan. I think the nearest one is Regina. And that would involve going on a week trip pretty much because we got to go there get a motel then you got to go for an ultrasound and then like a week later we go in for the insemination right yeah and there's no guarantee that it'll work so not only are you paying for the procedures your hotel and your food but you're also losing wages we just can't afford that so i guess you could go back and forth twice it's only seven hours to regina go there once do the ultrasound go back again the next week that's a lot of driving that's a lot of driving i'm glad that this place has gotten better yeah me too, me too. And my phenomenal co-workers have uh, really adjusted the schedule to uh, suit my fertility schedule. So, uh, you know, Big they're amazing. Out. Big shout out to them, yeah. Shout out to my, my girls. co-workers too. They've really, uh, they wished us luck. And uh, they've worked around our schedule here. I really appreciate that. Yeah, like who has jobs that they actually enjoy with people that they actually like to work with that adapt to your fertility schedule like oh i will yep. never take them for granted yep i'm really enjoying where i'm at me too i'm so happy to be back you good is there a baby is there a skin puppy hopefully hopefully good boys diesel where are you going get some water yeah Good boy, one more. Commander? Status report. It went well. Thank you. He says I smell great. So I have to go to work uh, for the afternoon yet. So I just got into my work clothes here. I'm gonna jump in the pickup. Britt went out to grab herself some food because she was craving some, uh, some takeout. So uh, I'll be, I guess at work for the next couple of hours. We'll come home and uh, see how we're doing in the evening. So let's go drive some trucks yet, shall we? I want to see what they got for us today. So let you guys out first. How about that? That's probably a good idea. Bright jacket on so people can see me coming a mile away. All right, boys, you guys want to go outside real quick before I go? Everybody, you guys want to go outside? Come on, bud. gonna be cold okay so make it quick okay quick let's go 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 the thermometer in the terrain all the way to Winnipeg said minus 29 today I think it got up to minus 26 on the way back well it doesn't feel that cold Wiener disagrees 
You guys hurry up. You guys want, are you done? Did you go? Let's go back in, bud. Come on, don't sit there shivering. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Wiener, come on. Come on. Oh, careful. Gotta open the door first. Frank. Frankie, come on. Commander. Commander. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Okay, guys, go, 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 go. Yep. Okay, so maybe it does still feel pretty cold. good to go it really sucks working with masks I'm just gonna say oh, I can breathe again oh man I really don't like those things okay here we go she's alive I accidentally brought my my good toque I have two like this one's a good one for going out which I wore to Winnipeg this morning, and one's a work toque, which I wear to work. And I wore my good toque to work. I think it'll be okay, it's only a half day. At least the sun is shining today. I mean, it is still pretty cold, but like I said, you climatize to it pretty quickly. It's still minus 28 according to my phone here. Minus 28. Feels more like minus 15 to me. And when it gets back down to minus 10, it's gonna be like beach weather. Definitely gonna go and have a bonfire. It's probably not gonna be much for me to do. I don't think they're gonna send me all the way to Winnipeg this afternoon yet, but you never know. You never know. I will do whatever the Lord God's request. They want me to go to Winnipeg, I'll go to Winnipeg. A little bit of a low gear there, Josh. Could have picked a different gear. Oh, and we got the next light red anyways, fantastic. Oh yeah, check this out. Trucker Josh chicken. Trucker Josh, it's a thing. It's a thing. Now I've gotta flipperize them. Whoa, whoa, that one got too excited.
How much longer after I flip them? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? I'm hungry now. Another 20 minutes. That's how you do that. So we got all these new uh, organizer baskets today. Well, some have my name on it. Finally tackling the uh, the mud room. Mm -hmm. It looks so bad, so disorganized, so cluttered. Get rid of stuff too. So how you feeling? You feeling pregnant? I'm feeling sore. Sore? Yep, sore. Is that a good sign, like a pregnant kind of sore? You don't get pregnant that fast. You never know. It's 2021. That's true. Lickety split. Lickety split. So, uh, we go for the, you go for the test in a few weeks, right? I don't go for a test. I just take a home pregnancy test this time. Okay. And either way, we wouldn't be revealing it for a couple of months after that yet. Probably till the end of the first trimester. So we're going to leave you hanging for a while. <laughs> Unless I start to show and then you guys see it sooner than that. Though they're probably going to catch on if we don't go for another IUI next month. Just thought of that. Well, we're not made of money. We don't even know if we can afford it yet. <laughs> it's true. We may, we may not be able to afford another IUI for a while. So just because we don't go for an IUI next month doesn't mean she's pregnant. Hey, you got to wait three months. We're going to wait for our first trimester to finish to make sure everything uh, is healthy, make sure that everything's good, and we'll do some kind of big announcement. Don't worry. We'll do a big build-up to it. You'll probably know what's coming. But will you? We'll try to make it a surprise. Chevy? Chevy? One sec, I got my, my rhino. One second. Diesel. Want to show him? This is our uh, new and organized front room. I think it looks great. Look, we've got all these little labels and stuff. Josh Hats. Josh Winter. Brit Winter. Misk. Dogs. Bugs and sun. I keep thinking that this, that, that says buns and sun. I don't know where. So it's about eight o'clock and I feel like I've been up for about three days straight. I'm tired. So I'm gonna wrap this up here now. Maybe Britt wants to say something. On a scale of one to 10, how pregnant are you? I don't know, but it hurts. So I'm just gonna sit here and watch dinosaurs until bedtime. So you're saying it's a 12. 14. 14. Let's hope. Okay, well, tomorrow it's back to a uh, regular day of work. Full day. I'll be up early in the morning. So I'll put this together and uh, hit the sack. And we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. We make new videos every day. Tell your friends if you like it. Chances are they might like it too. I'll see you tomorrow.